So today we're going to continue working with parallel lines. We're also going to do the construction. We have a whole page on the back of this front page to do the instructions. The steps are provided, but um, if you look at this first page, in each problem we're told that we have parallel lines. So in this case, in example number one, this segment is parallel to that segment, and I need to find angle W. I can't do that without drawing an additional line. So the statement at the top just says, to remind us, we can't ever change a problem, but we can always add to it. So I want to add a line to it to help me find W, and those lines are called auxiliary lines. Okay? So I need to draw a line to help me find angle W. Angle W is right here. And what I do is I draw a line that's parallel to the two that goes right through the vertex of angle W. So take your ruler and we draw a line right through the vertex of W. And as I mentioned before, if you want, you can always extend these lines extend the segments to make lines. So now I have three parallel lines. And we have to go back to our checklist. With parallel lines, we know that we have congruent, alternate interior. We have congruent, alternate exterior. We have congruent corresponding and same side interior, are they congruent? No, they are supplementary. So out of these four, we try to use one of those angle pairs to help us find angle W in this case. You can use a variety of angle pairs, but we're going to go through which one actually gets us to the answer in the shortest possible way. So in the first question, finding the measure of angle W, given this 41 degree angle, and if I look at these two parallel lines here, cut by this transversal, if this is 41, this angle is also 41 degrees using alternate interior angles. Given two parallel lines cut by a transversal, <coughs> alternate interior angles are congruent. Same on the other side. If you look at these two lines and treat this as your transversal, you have alternate interior, so this is also 35 degrees. So we draw a line, we try to use one of the angle pairs, and to get the measure of the whole from unit one, this is just angle addition. The sum of the parts equals the whole, so 41 plus 35 gives us a sum of 76. Good. So the measure of angle W is 76 degrees. So number two, let's draw the line right through the vertex of Z so that it is parallel to AB and CD. And this time we're going to use corresponding angles is if I look at the top two, AB and my auxiliary line, this angle corresponds to this angle right here. So this angle is 33 degrees. You want to again try to look for that congruent angle. You can use supplements, okay? I could have said, well, this angle is 33 because that's a vertical angle. And then these two angles right here are supplementary, so I can find the respective supplement, and then subtract it from 180 to find that supplement. So there's a variety of different ways to do it, but if you look for one of the congruent angle pairs, or the relationships that gives you a congruent angle, then you don't have to do any addition and subtraction with the supplements. And the same applies down here. If this angle is 22, Sliding it up along this transversal here to this parallel line, this is going to be 22 degrees as well. So the value of Z 
33 and 22 is 55. So number three, find the value of G and then also give your reasons. So let's draw the line through the vertex of G. So I have to move that up. And I need to, I don't need to, it just makes it easier if I look for one of those congruent angle pairs. So do I have congruent alternate interior, congruent alternate exterior, or do I have congruent corresponding, Sean? Congruent alternate interior right here. So here's the respective angle. So this is 56. And this is because alternate interior angles are congruent. So I'm indicating that angle right there is 56 degrees because alternate interior angles are congruent. And you can be more detailed in explanation. Can I use any other congruent angle pairs besides congruent alternate interior? We could do another alternate interior. If I extend this, it might be easier to see right here. And this would be 144 degrees. And then you can find its respective supplement right here. But we know from yeah, last class that one other theorem says that two angles on the same side of the transversal, same side interior, are supplementary. So if we count up from 144, it needs to add up to 180. So add 6 to get 150. 150 plus 30 gives you 180 degrees. So this angle is because same side interior angles are supplementary. So G though, we have to finish by finding the value of G. 36, 56, I'm going to add 6 and 6 is 12, carry the 1, and then 8 plus 1, 92 degrees is the angle. Before we do the construction, I want you to recall from the reading, okay, um, the Euclidean parallel postulate. So Euclidean geometry, we talked about Euclid in the beginning. When I have a parallel line, or when I have a given line and then a point off the line, you can only draw one line through P that's going to be parallel. So when it says to construct a line parallel to a given line through a point that's not on the line, you can only draw one. And it's a specific example. So we're going to construct CD through P parallel to AB. So I'm given line AB, and then I'm given point P not on AB. So with a straight edge, draw any line through point P intersecting AB. This line is your transversal. Okay? You're drawing the transversal for two parallel lines. You can draw it so it intersects the line at a 90 degree angle, but I would suggest or encourage you to draw a transversal that intersects the line giving you an acute or obtuse angle. So using the line tool, I'm going to draw my transversal here. So that means I need to extend a, B. And draw any transversal so that it intersects the given line. Step number two. Step number two says, well, first of all, just for our directions, it told us in the steps to label this point X, I believe. Yeah. So now copy angle X at point P. So here's angle X with X being the vertex. I'm going to copy that angle so that P is the vertex of my new angle. So using your compass to copy an angle, the first step is to draw. You can do it on either side. I'm just going to copy the acute angle. 
So to copy an angle, the first step we do, now my suggestion would be to my compass point, it really stretches it out to reach P, but you don't want, if possible, the pencil to go past P. So have the pencil some point between P and X, and we make, for me, I'm doing the acute angle, we make an arc. I make the same size arc up at vertex P. So up here, I'm going to make the same size. Oops, I went off the pencil tip. So I may want to extend this a little bit. I need to measure the width of the arc in order to copy it. So you can put your compass point here or here. It doesn't matter. But since the only spot to put my compass point above is right here, I'm going to put my compass point down below at that respective location. So now I need to measure the width, which I can actually keep the exact same compass setting, which could be the same for you as well. So I need to show that I measured it by making the arc. And I'm going to slide my compass point, not at P, but see how this location right here is above vertex X at that intersection between the arc and the transversal. So I want to put it above P and put it at that intersection of the arc and transversal, and I make the arc. So now through that point of intersection, right here, I draw a line through P, and we'll see how you did. Does it look to be pretty close as far as parallel with AB? Mine doesn't look too bad. I'm going to extend that. Again, this should be parallel to this line. In the instructions, you don't need to do this unless it tells you to on a test. It said to label the line CD. So I'll call this CD. <coughs> Back up in the steps. So I don't have the steps. Back up in the steps. I don't know if that'll, I might have to re-record. When it says to copy angle X at point P, for copying the angle, so I took this angle here and I moved it up the transversal so this angle would land right here. What angle pair is that? What's that? Is it alternate interior angles, alternate X corresponding? So we just used, and the, so far, this is never, this construction you've never been asked to do, or students in the past have never been asked to do this construction on a short answer question. It's always been multiple choice. What postulate or theorem allows you to do this construction? And since you're copying the angle, it's because of the corresponding angle postulate. Okay, on the next page, methods to prove. But at the top of the page, so the proofs last class were said, given two parallel lines, prove these angles to be congruent. Now, you're proving that two lines are parallel. And to do that, we use the converse of the theorems and postulates that we used last class. You don't ever have to write a converse. All the converse is is a switch of those statements. So instead of saying, if two lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So now it's going to say, so this is a switch of the two statements. Now it's going to say, two lines are parallel if, so if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. If corresponding angles are congruent, 
then the lines are parallel. If you have a pair of supplementary consecutive or same side interior angles, then the lines are parallel. So you have if this happens, then they're parallel. Not if they're parallel, then this happens. So it's switched. And then here, just to highlight, and here's just some pictures to help you remember the type of angle pairs. But circled, it says that if two lines um, are parallel to the same line, so more or less, I'll sketch this off to the side. Here's a line. And if this orange line is parallel to the green line, and the red line is also parallel to the green line, what's true about the red and orange line? They're parallel. So if lines are parallel to the same line, then they're also parallel to each other. So before we do the proof, we're actually going to use the definition of an angle bisector today. So let's fill that in. So in this picture, some of us still need to work on the definition of an angle bisector. It says, give an angle, COB, OA bisects that angle. So it means this angle is congruent to that angle. Because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. So you have to use that reason when you're doing a proof using an angle bisector. So now note the difference. We're given angles to be congruent, prove the lines are parallel. So given congruent angles prove they're parallel, not the other way around as it was last class. So take a minute to write your givens. Once you write your givens, you should mark what those givens give you in the picture. So it says that angle 1 right now is congruent to angle 3. It's marked. The next statement says that CE bisects angle DCB. So if that bisects the angle, what do we know to be true about angle 3 and angle 4? Yes, they are congruent. Number 2, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 for the reason an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. And I'm trying to show that I have parallel lines. In order to have parallel lines, I need to have one of these relationships exist. Okay? So if I go back to my picture, here are the two lines I'm going to highlight in blue that I want to be parallel. I want CE to be parallel to AB. Now, in order to do that, I need to look at one of the sides of the triangle as the transversal. So this is the transversal. Here's the angle that's given. Do I have a number there for its respective alternate interior? No. I could add a number there if I wanted to. Okay, I could put what number there? A 5, and what would be true about 5 and 4? They're congruent because they're vertical angles. I could also work with, if I look at this angle where the 3 is, the 3 is only part of that angle, so I don't have an alternate interior angle right there. So I could use possibly alternate, or alternate interior right here, or um, alternate exterior would be here. I don't have that. And then corresponding angles could be right here and right here. So, there's already numbers there. If there's a way that I can get one congruent to four, 
I can then say the lines are parallel. So using the statements that I have, angle one can grow into angle three, angle three can grow into angle four, from those two, do I have enough to say that angle one is congruent to angle four at this point? I do, by what property? Substitution. So number three is angle one is congruent to angle four, because in the statement above, I'm gonna take and replace angle three with the one, because one is congruent to angle three. So substitution, And then we're done. Step four, I can now say that CE is parallel to AB. And that's because if two lines, we were starting with if two parallel lines, but since I'm trying to show that they're parallel, if two lines cut by a transversal form, congruent corresponding angles, then the lines are parallel. At the bottom, perpendicularity. Perpendicularity, okay? Um, so dealing with perpendicular lines and all the theorems and definitions and properties. The first one says, if angle BAC is a right angle, so given that this is a right angle, then I can say that AB is perpendicular to AC. And I need to write it so that A is the endpoint of the ray. So given a right angle, I can say two lines are parallel or perpendicular. Given that they're perpendicular, I can then say that angles 1, 2, 3, and 4 are right angles. So given perpendicular lines, I know I have four right angles. That's always true. The next one, if line G and H, these two lines here, form a linear pair of congruent angles, so that means they're supplementary in the same measure they would both have to be at 90 degrees, which means their lines are perpendicular. The next one says, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, so the parallel lines are M and N, so if L is perpendicular to M and the lines are parallel, it's also perpendicular to N. So then it is perpendicular to the other line, or the second line, however you want to word it. And then the last one, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, so M is perpendicular to P, N is perpendicular to P, that means these two lines are parallel. So then they are parallel to each other. Example five on the back, it says that A, B, and C, D are parallel. So I'm going to note they're parallel. It says if E, F is perpendicular to A, B, so if that's a 90 degree angle and the lines are parallel, then E, F is also perpendicular to C, D. That's one of the definitions or theorems. Find the value of X and Y. I know I have two variables, but I don't need to set up a system because if this angle is 90, this angle is 90. So 6Y equals 90, divide by 6, and y is 15. Over here, again, if this is 90, well, in fact, if the lines are parallel and we have EF perpendicular to both, every angle in this picture is going to be a 90 degree angle. So setting 5x plus 4y equal to 90, plugging in 15 for y, 4 times 15 is 60, Subtract the 60 from 90, we get 30. Divide by 5, and x is 6. In example number 6, find the value of x and y. Well, the only thing that's given in the picture 
is that I have two of these lines, so the lines right here, they're perpendicular to the same line. So that must mean that those two lines are parallel. So using that transversal, I don't have any angle pairs. But let's use, instead of that transversal, this transversal. So if this is 2y, this is also 2y, and this is also 2y, I can say if that's x, this is x, and then this is x. So we have a variety of relationships here. Okay? I know that vertical angles, these two are congruent. So 2y equals x plus y. And I also know that x plus 2y is equal to 180. There's no way to avoid the system here, but in the first one, if I subtract y, I get y is equal to x. So in this equation, where x is, I'm going to substitute y, and I get 3y equals 180, so therefore y is 60. Now I know from this right here that x and y should be equivalent, so if y is 60, x is 60, but I have to show that it is using an original equation. So 2 times 60 equals x plus 60. 120 equals x plus 60, subtract, and x is also 60. You can't substitute in an equation that you derived. It has to be an original one. Okay?